Exodus chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near pi Hathiron between the Migdol and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea, directly opposite Baal Zephon. Pharaoh will think, The Israelites are wandering around in the land in confusion, hemmed by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go, and we have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots, along with all the other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses, chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea, near Pihathiroth, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you, what have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see here today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And uh, I've messaged this title, guys, the God who fights for you, the God who fights for you. I don't know about you, but every day we face battles, don't we? From small things, from getting up in the morning, um, to getting your kids ready for the day for school. I know my parents, they said that was always a battle when I was younger. To the bigger things through mental illness. Some of you guys might be battling through depression, anxiety, and people do suffer with that and battle through that. And to COVID-19 as a country, as a nation, we are battling through COVID-19. And some battles, they're just life. These things happen. And, you know, sometimes there's not much we can do about it. But we have to remember, we do live in a spiritual battle. We live in an unseen spiritual battle, and it can be the enemy. Just like the children of Israel have heard, they had an enemy. The Egyptians was, were, was their enemy. And we have an enemy also, don't we? The, the devil and all the schemes that he brings. I don't know about you guys, but you might be in a situation where you've seen a breakthrough. You see things happening only to have a setback. And that can be really frustrating. We've seen this with COVID-19, haven't we? Previously, we went in lockdown. Then we came out of it. There was a glimmer of hope and things start to get better, only to be put back into another lockdown. And that can be really frustrating. And I'm sure um, you guys, like myself, are feeling tired, just tired of all this going on, feeling fearful, maybe of the future, anxious. And I know my life, you know, I've been in those situations before where I saw a breakthrough. I saw things happening only to have a setback. And that be that can be very, very discouraging and frustrating also. But just to put things into perspective, guys, not to lower what we're going through, because we are living in un unprecedented times. But, you know, throughout history, people have suffered, as we remember Brother and Sunday, people who died in the war and who suffered in the World War One and Two, and, and even today, people are, are still serving our country. But also, the children of Israel, they lived in Egypt for 430 years. It tells us so in Exodus 12 40. They were living in slavery, living in oppression, living in suffering for so long. And, you know, I just can't imagine going through that at all. But God did the impossible, didn't he? God delivered them out. And, you know, it seemed to be a victory. There seemed to be a breakthrough, only to be chased down by the Egyptian army and to be facing destruction and death with no escape, with their, with their backs facing the Red Sea, 
what seemed to be a victory now, it seems to be a setback. It seems the enemy has won. And we often can feel like that, can't we? We can often feel frustrated. Maybe the enemy has won. And I don't know your situation. You might be in impossible situations in your lives. We are living in difficult times at the moment. But I just want to really encourage you this morning. I want to stir your faith. Because that, that's that, when we feel like that, that's when we have to trust in the Lord. We have to trust the Lord to fight our battles. And as we remember men and women who've served in the war to fight for our freedom, we remember that Jesus has fought for us, that he's already won the victory. We are already on the winning side, which is a great encouragement. He is the miracle working God. Before I move on to the main three points I want to speak about, it's important to remember that God is sovereign, that God turns the bad into good. And he wants to display his glory and power in our lives, and even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of uncertainties. And I love that verse in Genesis 50, 20, where it says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And we see in Romans 9, 17, where it describes God hardening the heart of Pharaoh in order for God's glory and power to be displayed. For it says, for scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might be displayed in my power in you, that my name might be claimed in all the earth. Knowing that God is sovereign, knowing that God wants to bring the bad into good, knowing that he wants to display his glory and power through our lives, even through suffering. And he does this in many different ways, but one way he does do it is fighting our battles. How do we let God fight our battles to display his glory and power in our lives? I want to focus on the last verse uh, that Ailish brought to us this morning and just draw three points out from the text to apply it to our lives. So in Exodus 14 verses 13 to 14 from the NIV version, it says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. I'll say that again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So my first point this morning is do not be afraid. In verse 13, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. In the previous verse, 10 to 12, it talks about the Israelites were terrified and they were blaming Moses for bringing them out of Egypt because they were about to be destroyed. And they said they'd rather be slaves in Egypt than to die in the desert with no hope at all. And I don't blame them. They would have been afraid. They would have been terrified. And I'm sure we all would be terrified if we was in that situation too. And in our circumstance right now, you know, it seems normal, you know, we are, you know, we can be terrified, you know, some of you might be afraid of what we're going through at this moment in this world, what's happening around us, a lot of uncertainties. But I really believe that, yes, the Israelites were afraid of death. They were afraid of the enemy. But the root cause of it was they didn't have a true fear of the Lord at that time. And we know this because in the last verse of Exodus 14, it says, And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and Moses, his servant. It was only after the Lord delivered them fully until they had a fear of the Lord. And there are two types of fear. There's a fear that comes from the enemy and a fear that comes from the Lord. But there's a huge difference. The fear of the enemy wants to bring enslavement, wants to bring you back into your old way of living, your old self, your old self, and wants to bring destruction and chaos to our lives. Where the, where the Lord's fear is the beginning of wisdom. It brings freedom, freedom from our old selves. It brings trust and it brings us to a deeper reverence of worship towards God. It's an awe of God. And I love this verse in Acts 2.43, where it says, everyone was filled with awe at the many 
wonders and signs before the apostles. They were filled with awe. Everyone was. And that's what it's like to have the fear of the Lord. And also in Romans 8, 15, which describes about, you know, us not being slaves to fear again of our old selves. So the spirit you receive does not make you slaves, doesn't make you slaves to your old selves anymore. So that you live in fear again, fear of the enemy. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption. By him, we call it Abba, Father. It's that heart of worship. It's that heart of reverence towards God. And that's what the fear of the Lord looks like. When we have a healthy fear of the Lord, the fear of the enemy cannot consume us. It cannot overcome us. It's not to say that we won't be afraid, but it's to say the fear of the Lord comes first. And we have that, that awe of God. The enemy cannot overcome us by his fear. It's the key is that the fear of the Lord in our lives. But also we, not, we also need not to be afraid because God is greater, isn't he? Though the enemy wants to try to intimidate us, to bring fear, maybe through COVID-19 or other circumstances. Remember, in 1 John 4, 4, it says, you, dear children, you are from God and have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. The Holy Spirit who is in you, the one who is God himself that's in you, is greater than the enemy. He's greater than COVID-19. He's greater than the devil. He's greater than your circumstance. There was one time in lockdown where I was intimidated by the enemy in my old flat. It was one evening it happened. And the enemy's fear tried to overcome me and consume me. Until I remembered my identity in Christ. Until I remembered who God is. That God has already defeated the enemy. And God is greater. And we need to remember who we are. We need to remember that you are a child of God. That you have God in you. Who is greater than the enemy. And God is for us, not against us, is he? So remember that, do not be afraid, fear the Lord and not the enemy, and remember that God is greater. My second point, stand firm. In verse 13, Moses simply says, stand firm. How do we stand firm against the enemy when it comes at us? If you were ever confronted by a wild animal, maybe a lion, a rhino, an elephant, these huge animals that can cause so much destruction, in any documentaries, they always say to you, if you're facing an animal like this, you stand very firm, you stand very still and you do not move. And I've been in the situation before. In 2012, I was in Zambia. Zambia, guys, I know we've got some people who come from Zambia in the church. And I was in this place called Livingston. It's a beautiful place in Zambia. Victoria Falls, one of the biggest waterfalls in the world. And we was out in the bush one time. And um, with a, a tour guide with us, with a guy with an air rifle, and we saw a rhino. And the rhino couldn't see us. It was not far away at all, out behind this bush. And the guy said, get out, get out of the truck and be very quiet. And I wish I could show you guys, I've got a picture at home with me smiling, being very quiet, very firm, with this guy next to me with an air rifle, ready to protect me just in case and the rhino behind me looking scary. And it's very similar, guys, when it, when it comes to things of the enemy. We need to stand firm, still, and trust in God, who's ready to fight for us. And, you know, we need to stand in the Lord's power also. I love this psalm, Psalm 46, 10. It says, be still, I know that I'm God. We need to be still. And know that God is with us, that he is God. He is greater and bigger than the enemy. The enemy is intimidation and fear. And we need to stand in the Lord's power. And we heard about the Ephesians 6, about the full armour of God. And I just want to read some of it again, because it really emphasises standing firm and still in the Lord's power. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 
And then verse 13 says, therefore, upon the full armor of God. So when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm. Then with the belt of truth, buckle around your well, white waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel. The enemy wants to condemn. He wants to make us look inwards, look to defeat. But God says, stand firm. Stand firm in my power. It's not by your strength, but it's by my spirit's power, says the Lord. We need to stand in God's power. So next time you're fearful, next time you're afraid, say to yourself, I'm going to stand firm in the Lord's power. Not on my strength, but in the Lord's power and strength. Stand firm. I'm going to stand firm on the rock of Jesus, who's unshakable. I'm going to stand firm on his promises because they never fail. And I'm going to let God fight for me. I'm going to let God fight for us. So no matter what circumstance, guys, stand firm. Thirdly, we need to trust in our deliverer. In verse 14, it says, you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. This word for deliverance is the same word for salvation. You know, the name Jesus, the Hebrew word Yeshua, it's meaning to, to deliver, to rescue. God, Jesus is our rescue, our deliverer, our salvation. That's who he is. That's his character. That is his nature. And we need to remind ourselves that's, that's what God is. And, you know, pride can get in the way often. And we can try to fight our own battles, thinking we can handle it. But actually, we need to trust fully in Jesus, who's our deliverer and our salvation. In Proverbs 3, 5, 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Trust is so important in any relationship. And likewise, we need to trust in God. We need to trust in him. Do you trust him? Do you trust him in your circumstance? Whatever the battle is, do you trust him? And do we as a church trust God at this time? of uncertainty with COVID-19 lockdown, do we trust in our deliverer? Do we trust Jesus, who's our salvation? He is the one who has constantly shown throughout scripture that he is our deliverer, our salvation. The one who delivers people from bondages, the one who opens blind eyes, the one who heals the brokenhearted, the one who heals the sick, the one who even raises the dead. The one who saves us from sin, the one who saved us from death itself, the one who saved us from the wrath of God. We deserve the wrath of God because we're guilty, but Jesus has saved us from that. And he has saved us from eternal separation from God. Remind yourself, church, what the Lord has delivered you and saved you from. You know, in church, in our church, we've seen so many testimonies of God doing amazing things. Of delivering people from addictions, from saving people from jobs, even healings. You know, my wife, for example, she really did her ankle in really bad not long ago. And, you know, she, you know, she was in a lot of pain. But the healing the Lord did was amazing, honestly. Like, she stopped talking about the pain and stuff. It was just so, the, the recovery was amazing. God is good. God does these amazing things. So we need to trust God, no matter what we're going through. Trust that he can deliver us, that he can save us from anything. If God can save us from sin, if God can save us from death, if God can save us from an eternal separation from God, he can save you guys from anything. He can deliver us through anything. And some of you guys, you might be going through things, addictions maybe. Maybe you've gone to the bottle at these times. That the Lord can deliver you from whatever you're going through, whatever obstacle is in your way. But sometimes, and often actually, deliverance is a process, salvation is a process. And you might have heard the saying that we are saved, 
we are being saved and one day we will be saved and it's so true it's a process and in verses 21 to 22 of Exodus 14 is it gives a really important message here which really emphasizes this point it says that Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night the Lord drove the sea back when when I've been watching films of, of, of this event happening, especially The Prince of Egypt, which is a great film, it's spectacular. And it's like instant, the sea just instantly goes up. But it really stuck out to me that actually the Lord could do anything. He could have parted the sea like that. But it was all night he did it. And with deliverance, with it can it can be a process. Just like sanctification is a process of us to be more like Jesus. Things in your life, addictions can take time. They can be instant like that. God's got the power to do that. And I really believe that in your life. But it can be a process and we need to be patient with the process sometimes. But God is good and he will deliver us. So trust in the Lord and his deliverance and he will fight for you. Just come to a conclusion now. To see God fight our battles... We need to firstly not be afraid. We need to fear the Lord, not the enemy. And remember that God is greater. Secondly, stand firm in the Lord's power. And lastly, trust fully in the Lord, who is our deliverer and saviour. I just want to finish off with the rest of the passage that we didn't read. And I just want you to just really be encouraged by this. Verse 15, it says, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the waters so that the Israelites can go through the sea on the dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. They will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen, then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved in front and stood behind them, come in between the armies of, of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night, the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind and turned its dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, Lord looked down from the pillar of fire in the cloud of the Egyptian army and threw into confusion. He jammed the wheels on their chariots so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And at daybreak, the sea went back at his place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards and the Lord swept over them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and Moses, his servant. Amen. I'm just going to pray and then we're going to listen to a song called Jesus Paid It All. Because he's paid the price for us. He's won the battle. He's won the victory already. And then we'll go out to our break, break up rooms. Heavenly Father, just thank you for this morning. Thank you that you fight our battles, God. I don't know people's situations, personal situations, God, but I thank you that nothing's too great for you, God. Nothing's too hard for you to, to deliver them from their addictions, Lord God. I don't know what it is. 
I'll just pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you just break into their life. Lord, would you do a miracle, God? You're the one who parted the Red Sea, God. Would you do do that in their lives today, God? Well, thank you that you fight our battles. Help us to not be afraid. Help us to stand firm in, in your power, God. Help us to trust you in all circumstances that we go through. God bless you guys. I'm going to play the song called Jesus Paid It All. Bye. If you like what you heard, there are ways to connect to Ridgeway Community Church. You can connect by our website at www.ridgewaycommunity.church or drop us a message via chris at ridgewaycommunity.church. You can also join our virtual Sunday Zoom service at 10.30am. If you have teenagers in years 7 to 11, they can also connect with our youth ministry. For more information, please drop us a message with details provided. We would love to hear from you. Many blessings from Ridgeway Community Church, Digcock.